Hi, this is Kirk Davis with Green River Community College. I'm making a second video here with Jim Berrios because we were we were just discussing the impact that local businesses have on the community. And Jim was mentioning some of the you were mentioning some of the organizations that you're involved with, and it's kind of like all year long you're doing something for somebody. Would would you just share some of the uh, I, you know. Well, we were talking about one thing we were talking about was that you know when you patronize a local business like Golden Steer Rest, uh, Golden Steer Steakhouse and wait help me with the name Golden Steer Steak, Steak and, and Rib House on Kennedy's Hill, uh, a business like that, about 70, 70 to eighty cents of every dollar stays in the local community because you've hired local people, and when you do business with a chain store or restaurant, only about twenty to twenty to 30, twenty cents to thirty cents stays in the community. There's a big difference where you do business. So, so Jim, I was just hoping you would share some ideas with us of some of the charitable giving, support of the community things that you're involved in. Sure, and we, you know a lot of the things that we do, we don't do it for the recognition. Right. But we got to talking about the activities, and um, as we go through the list, um, I actually feel a little tired. But, <laughs> uh, but what we do, I bet and, you do. And, and we do it because we think it's the right thing to do for this community, and we just have a passion for this community. Um, as an example, the schools, uh, we are constantly getting approached by the schools for donations and or help them with meals. Right. And so we do that. Just a matter of fact, today, uh, Kent Ridge High School approached us um, for their uh, uh, senior, um, uh, one of their events for their seniors, and they wanted to do a fundraiser. So they yeah. asked if we would do the spaghetti for them, the oh, spaghetti sauce. Oh, that's nice. So... Um, I said yes for about a hundred people. So oh wow, uh, we got that set up. For That's the very summer. generous. Yeah. So, um, but the other thing we do, we give them uh, gift certificates for their sports teams and and support a lot of the sports team in the community. Um, also, the Kiwanis Club. Um, yeah. I'm a proud member of the Kent Kiwanis Club. Woohoo! Yay! Uh, it's at noon. At They're our, gonna love at hearing our this. Yeah. And my wife is also an honorary uh, member. Yeah. But we um, we help uh, essentially the Kiwanis Club with all their fundraisers that have to do with food. Now, yeah. Go figure. Right, right. So, um, for instance, uh, as an example, the Onion Burger Stand at, at Cornucopia Ooh. Days, we help them with that, yeah. uh, coordinating that. Um, the crab feed, their annual crab feed. Oh, yeah. We go through cases of crab. And, oh, gosh. Uh, that night, my wife and I go home smelling like crab. <laughs> it takes a couple of days to get rid of it. Oh, yeah. Um, also, we help them with the senior breakfast uh, every year uh, at Easter time. Oh, yeah. Uh, that we do for seniors and then uh, we also uh, last year started hosting the Willows Place and it's a co-op that we do with Qantas Club and the Win Willows Place uh, group oh yeah and we did a coat and clothing drive oh yeah and so we helped with that fundraiser and Suzanne uh, was mentioning that, that that was exhausting I mean yeah, that's, yeah, that's a lot that, of work after we got all the donations and and to, in order to eat the meal and we have it at our establishment um, uh, they have to donate a coat or a piece of clothing. Oh yeah! And, and they get you know the meal. Oh. And so wow. after everybody leaves, and we had close to 100 people that showed wow. up. Wow, that's and nice. Just tons of clothing. Oh gosh. Uh, Suzanne and a group of folks went through and they organized it and wow. got it distributed to uh, the folks that needed it. Yeah. Um, also, uh, once a month through Willow's Place, we. Um, help feed the uh, uh, the homeless in, in the community. How often do you do that? Uh, we do it the third Thursday of every month. Oh, every month? Yep. Wow. Third Thursday of every month. And uh, typically, um, unfortunately uh, for the community, it's a growing number. Yeah. So I, they get anywhere from 40 to as high as 90 people. Yeah. Do you know, it is increasingly sad how many people are in need. And yet, you know, it is a business like yours. And we were just talking about how small businesses really are the backbone of our local economy and your success. And that's why I do what I do, because, you know, because you're doing what you're doing. You know, you're out there giving and, and helping, supporting. And you're not just, it's just not passively giving money. I mean, you guys are involved. You're sweating. You're smelling like crab. You're exhausting yourself, sorting out the clothing, getting to the right people. I mean, you're yeah. hands on. It's, it's a little bit, like you said, more than just giving money. It's a little bit of giving of ourselves. And yeah. I have to say that um, 
some of our biggest assets um, as far as our business is concerned is the staff and and they volunteer on a lot of oh, these, yeah. uh, events. Oh yeah. They give, yeah. And, and so do our customers. Yeah, well that's the greatest thing is how we work together as a community. Absolutely. Because I think you're, most of your staff is here from the local area of course. That's correct. You know, you're here from the local area and that's one thing that we like about local entrepreneurs is you guys typically live in the community. Right. You know. So, a few other things that we do. Um, Thanksgiving time. We, oh yeah. We do. Uh, we close our restaurant down early. Yeah. At two o'clock, and we have a two o'clock homeless feed, uh, and a four o'clock ho- community feed. I, I like to call it a community feed. Now, if somebody's listening to this, is there a way that they can contact you or participate or help if if they want to? Yeah. Well, that's the cool thing about that. Uh, over the last several years, we've done this every every since we've been in existence. Oh, okay. Uh, well, every since we took over the yeah. restaurant. Yeah. And so we're about to do our 13th year of uh, doing this homeless feed. Oh, wow. Uh, our community feed. Yeah. Sorry. But, you know, we, we like, we, we have partnered up with our food vendor, bread vendor, yeah. and our linen company, and they help us with this. And uh, we get uh, volunteers from our staff, customers, friends, neighbors. Oh, wow. Um, they, they participate in this event. And um, I have the staff, everybody that's volunteering, they wear black pants, white shirts. Oh, nice. And my wife sets up the room beautifully uh, with the Thanksgiving theme. And uh, we have white linen and linen napkins. Oh, for wow. These folks. Oh, so it's done really nicely. Oh, yeah. And it's the first time, it's a one time a year for a lot of these folks who we've seen them come in over the years that they go out to eat. Yeah. So. Get a, a wonderful meal, my goodness. Now, so that's Thanksgiving. Is there anything you do after Thanksgiving? Uh, yeah, we we also we're in the middle of um, uh, just last week we we help with the we actually started doing this uh, um, 10 11 years ago can't remember uh, we did the first uh, uh, Greater Kent Historic Society did dinner oh fundraiser. yeah oh that's and nice. so we worked with them in developing this and so we do the dinner for that and it's, it's a fundraiser yeah and then also we do the camp food bank breakfast again that was another thing oh, that we that's started nice. with them years ago and that's coming up next week and so we do the breakfast for that and that's the one day a year that my wife will get up early wow yeah she usually she'll break her get up yeah break her tradition nine o'clock so she has to be up uh, at five, five o'clock oh, in the morning. that's a sacrifice yeah that is that is a sacrifice yeah absolutely so um and then we also um uh, for Christmas, we typically um, adopt, and we've done this every year, uh, two to three families in the community that are oh, in yeah. need. And with the help of our staff, customers, uh, we're able to provide a Christmas for these families. Yeah, these families in need, in need yeah. Uh, and um, and the real cool thing about it is we always have um, a volunteer to be Santa. And so uh, what we do is we 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 you know gather donations and and. Uh, gifts and then we deliver uh, the gifts just before Christmas to these families and Santa is, oh. is the one who delivers them. So Do you it's know. a really good experience. Well I have to I have to tell you when you when we were talking about this, I asked if we could film this because it's not something that you would normally talk about. But I want to give everybody kind of an inside look because not everybody gets to hear this, not everybody gets to see this side. And right now there's a lot of really negative publicity against businesses and business owners and the rich versus the poor and class warfare. There's a lot of this stuff but I wanted people to really understand that that's not what's really happening out there. I mean, this, like you said, it's your employees, it's your customers, it's people in the community who are getting together, you know, partnering, you know, because of, you know, and I I just think you're that kind of person. I think you and your wife are those kind of people who give and contribute beyond, you know, what what the average person does. Well, and Kirk, I have to tell you that that there's no way that my wife and I could afford to do all these things. And it is a collaborative effort. and, um, and, And we are blessed with having folks that are willing to chip in with us and and do the things that we do and uh, we just really enjoy it yeah um, you know the, the the thought behind you know businesses just making tons of money yeah. right now we're into our fourth year of a recession yeah and we're all feeling it yes but, um, there's just no way that my wife and I will give up some of these events that we're, we're involved with. We, um, I'm working with another wonderful client, and she has a name for you and what you do and people like you, and that is that she calls you a giver and a gifter. 
And this is the kind of people who they they choose to contribute to the world. You know, they want to give of themselves. So I, I appreciate you taking this time because it so moved me that I wanted to share it with, with other people so that they would know. And I asked you to get specific and to talk about the actual charities and, and things you support because I wanted to give them a shout out too. But I know there's a lot of people who will watch this who will feel moved and compassionate. I'm hoping they'll jump on board with you. And I'm hoping to create a bigger movement because of this. And well, just tell them to call me. There's, yeah. there's a lot of need in this community. And it's growing. The need is growing. You know, and I appreciate the fact that you and your wife are kind of on top of it. So Jim, Jim and Suzanne are people that you can talk to and they'll help you get involved to help you become a part of it. And it's something we can do together to make a difference. So Jim, thank you very much. You're welcome. And if they're going to get a hold of me, 253-350-1811 is my cell phone number. Wow. I didn't expect that. One more time. 253-350-1811. Wow. I wasn't going to do that to you, but thank you very much. You're welcome.